We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Ann Arbor, Michigan, as we visit with Coach Joshua Schumacher from the Concordia Cardinals. The Cardinals 7-3 and three last year, Coach, and I, I would say a pretty good season overall. Start off 5-0. and oh, You have a couple of tough one-possession losses midway through the season that really, I think, maybe changed the course a little bit. But you finish on a strong note with a big win over previously undefeated Indiana Wesley and, again, close out the season 7-3. and three. Talk a little bit about last year. Yeah, we uh, going into last season, our guys were definitely very hungry. Uh, you know, they had uh, just eager to uh, get back to playing elite football. And uh, we really started the year hot, and uh, it, that was going great. We had some significant injuries uh, to really more starters than uh, I've dealt with as a head coach. Uh, and so kind of we still battled in every game, and we were competing down to those wires. And you talk about those one-position games. And so, you know, Coach uh, Cody and Coach O'Hara in their first year as off, uh, co-coordinators on offense. And so certainly – for any even an experienced coordinator, when you lose your your quarterback goes down with an injury and you're you're losing you know a top receiver or tight end you know Logan Hay only played four and a half games and he still led the league in uh, receiving yards as a tight end. Um, you lose some of the, those top guys. You know, got to get creative and keep figuring things out uh, in terms of game planning and all that. So I definitely think we gained a lot of experience in that. Uh, and we got a lot of that same depth coming back this year. And so thankful for that. But yeah, started the season really strong, battled through uh, those two losses in the middle of the season. Uh, definitely really proud of how our guys responded. Uh, didn't play our best game at St. Francis, Indiana, but then closing out the year uh, to beat Indiana Wesleyan at home uh, certainly was uh, a good finish for our guys on the season. And I think we we're just one of the you know first teams on the outside of the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely think we got ourselves back to it you know, if we would have been able to play a, you know, another week or so, we could definitely prove that we were a playoff team. Well, it, it, it was a team that looked that way from the outside, for sure. Definitely looked that way from, from this perspective, coach it, the, the program has been in the news recently. And I, I did want to, to mention that quickly as the, as this would be the last season for athletics at Concordia, uh, at least on, on, on the campus there, as we talk about the spring just a little bit, and we'll talk a little bit more more about some of those players you were talking about returning what's the mood right now and, and how are you going into this final season yeah we definitely lost some freshmen in the recruiting process of it uh lost some guys you know in terms of like having the instability of what was going on uh, but we also returned 17 starters and we have uh, 102 guys that are committed right now and we have 15 guys that are still deciding what they want to do uh, we had a great session last night with our guys out uh, doing Skelly. Our guys are working out four days a week in the morning right now. And then we have some guys that come in the evening and work out as well. Uh, we'll have two thirds of the roster here July 8th. And, uh, you know, we definitely challenged our guys in terms of we uh, once our guys made the decision that they wanted to be here. Right. We didn't challenge the guys of like, OK, trying to figure out what was best for them, because uh, you can't really arm wrestle in, someone into being like, hey, this is going to be the last ride. Uh, but once those guys have decided that they want to be a part of this and go all in together on it, you know, from there right now, it's a challenge of like you guys are definitely making like a sacrifice to be here together as men and to do this. And it's like we're the commitment level of these guys. Right. Is definitely high and above, like just following the path of least resistance and doing some things where they, they're facing adversity. And so, you know, we want to rally our guys behind that and together and so definitely really proud of how much so many of the guys have been able to stick together and you know we're you know as a coach and as a man and as a, a mentor to so many of the guys that uh you know that we recruited really hard that aren't with us we're still like you know god's blessings to those guys and you know wish them well and all of those circumstances for them as well uh but it's exciting that we have our entire coaching staff coming back minus an assistant defensive line coach uh and having so many coaches continue to uh be here and be committed so we are definitely pumped about putting everything we got into this last season of concordia football we'll have five fifth year seniors and 25 fourth year seniors so definitely led by a strong group of returners and uh, we're taking those guys on a senior trip again. We'll go down to West Virginia, uh, do some things out in the woods, but then we'll go whitewater rafting and do, do a mud obstacle course and some fun things with those guys as well. So a lot to be excited about in the midst of kind of some chaos, quite frankly.
I understand. I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm excited and excited excited. for you. Coach, of those returnees that are coming back, uh, among those on the offense, Gavin Brooks is returning this season, uh, Brandon Stewart returning this season, and you get another year with Seeger DeGainer, which obviously I, I would think anyone who has followed the program in recent years knows he's been a big part uh, of the offense, special teams, you name it. Uh, talk a little bit about your offense and, and specifically those guys returning. Yeah, I'll start with Seeger because it's not too often you get to have a two-time All-American come back. Uh, so he's uh, he's coming back for, you know, his freshman year was COVID, so he's coming back for his fifth fall this year, and he's been a captain for us. Uh, he's a great leader, works really hard, um, just an unbelievable young man uh, with just a really bright future ahead of him um, in football and beyond football. Uh, definitely excited. You know, Gavin's been uh, healed up uh, this summer. He's out throwing last night, so excited to have him back for his fourth year. So he's really going into his fourth year of starting experience. So uh, definitely excited about that. Uh, Brandon Stewart and James Carpenter will be back at running back. Uh, both those guys are going into uh, their senior year. So, uh, you know, it's great to have that experience, especially in the pass protection, as well as them toting the ball. Um, our tight end, Logan Hay, is an absolutely just monster. He came in as a receiver. He's 6'4". He's up to 250 now, and just like he is an animal. And uh, so he broke his leg in the Lawrence Tech game, and so he was looking good last night. So excited to have him back. We also have Pete Pazala, who, uh, you know, really kind of an all-purpose utility guy at tight end for us, will be a senior, did really well. Uh, will Dowling, who is an academic All-American for us last year and a first-team all-conference guy at left guard, uh, he's back uh, for his fifth year as he wraps up his uh, education major and some student teaching this year. The other exciting news is that his brother is back, his twin brother is back as well, who missed last season because he had a couple surgeries in the offseason. So having both those guys back together, uh, getting to play together on the left side. This will be the first time uh, while they've been in college that they got to play together on the same side uh, this season. So uh, excited for those guys to have that memory and bond together as twin brothers. Uh, our left tackle last year, Joe Prushnik, you know, we've moved him over. He's kind of playing more on the right side. Joe was a freshman that started at left tackle for us. Uh, we graduated two guys um, on the inside. Um but we also have Jake Kaczynski coming back, who's been a three, a two and a half, like three year starter for us uh, at offensive tackle, too. So definitely really encouraged by those guys coming back. Uh, Bailey Brooks is another receiver that will be back for us. Gavin's uh, younger brother. And we also have uh, Tavion Warren, who was a guy we played against last year at Wayne State. And we really thought he was their best skilled player. Um, you know, he had one season left and. Uh, he's committed to coming and, you know, he's definitely a really dynamic receiver, kick returner. So when they can't kick the ball to Seeger, you know, and Javion's out there as well, I, you know, we're going to have different guys that uh, can return that ball when they try to avoid kicking it to our two-time All-American returner. We're visiting now with Joshua Schumacher, who is the head football coach for the Concordia Cardinals, heading into his eighth season, 54 and nine in seven previous seasons and no losing records over the course of that time either coach so a uh, successful time in in your tenure there we talked about the offense on defense david cagle is coming back and he was just a, a a monster especially getting across that line 18 tackles for loss 10 of those sacks tell us a little bit about your defense yeah david cagle is a you know he comes in as a freshman and he's probably like I think like 208, something like that. A uh, really good basketball player, really hard worker. Got to play a little bit his freshman year, really not that much significantly. Rotated quite a bit his sophomore year, probably added like 10, 15 pounds going into that year. Now he's up to 240 something. Uh, and when the scouts tested him, he ran a 467 in the spring. Like, and he led the league in sacks. Like, he is a guy that worked his way up and obviously is a really talented, but he, you know, he's definitely one of those guys. that's an even better person. Like he is, he's an unbelievable uh, young man. Like he's a phenomenal leader uh, for our guys. So excited to have him back. Also have Marv Dupree back who uh, is our other defensive end. You know, both these guys can really run their physical play with their hands. Well, Marv was a tailback in high school. And so it, it's exciting to have guys with that kind of speed uh, on the edge and, uh, you know, we graduated some guys uh, on the inside. 
Uh, but we also have uh, Logan Narwald, who is probably our most technical uh, defensive tackle. He blew out his knee in that Lawrence Tech game, and so he uh, he's he's he was out there this morning looking great. He was, had a great day squatting on Tuesday, and he's just crushed his rehab. So he's going to be a senior this year. Uh, Gene Richmond is also in there. We've got some other guys that are working really hard and developing. You know, we've had a guy that's just he is uh, he's he's a thick wrestler who was a 215 pound wrestler in high school and he's up to 290 right now his name's uh, uh andrew van dyke and van dyke has just been an, a man like he's good friends with guys that are playing on defense with him you know they kind of razz him a little bit about getting on the field more and doing that he is determined and has just really been getting after it and so we're excited about him jarrell stevens and you know definitely a lot of excitement uh with those guys there at linebacker uh, Liam Carey is, uh, he was our will linebacker really became a starter about the fourth game of his freshman year and ended up leading us in tackles, uh, which is quite the feat because we had, you know, Casey Roush who won't be back, but Casey was an all American for us this last year. I got to pause real quick to tell you about Casey because Casey finished college with over 300 tackles, right? He averaged 42 some yards per punt. Uh, he had a punt. I'm pretty sure his long punt was about 70 yards. He was two for three on field goals his junior year, uh, had a pick six on defense, was in double digits on sacks, seven forced fumbles, and he had two yards rushing. Like I don't on this side of the millennium, I don't know how many guys in college football have, uh, you know, where they passed, they ran, they tackled that much. Uh, scored like he was a, he's a throwback special guy graduated with his nursing degree uh, he's punting for Pitt State this uh, this year he's down in Kansas using his uh, last year of eligibility from the COVID down there and uh, but that that was a special guy I had to kind of yeah. shout out there um, and we also have Chase Maynard Chase Maynard was defensive player of the week in the Indiana Wesleyan game uh, he suffered through a high ankle sprain during parts of the season. So excited about him coming back. We also have Evan Pittenger, Ben Toddy, uh, two guys that are seniors as well. So we definitely have some great depth at the linebacker position. And those guys have played significantly over the years. Ethan Burroughs has really done a good job as a freshman this spring. Uh, and so really looking forward to seeing his progress throughout the summer. In the secondary, we've got three all-conference guys coming back, uh, two fifth-year safeties and Gabe Whitmore and Colby Comisher. And then uh, Kelly Matthews, uh, who just looks phenomenal right now. He's a guy that, uh, you know, really he was a heavy hit. He was a hitter of the year last year at the corner position. Like he's just a dog. And uh, so definitely I, it, it's hard. Like it oozes out of me. I'm excited to brag about him uh, and all these guys and how many guys. And there's so many more that I didn't name, uh, but definitely, definitely optimistic about what these guys are going to be able to accomplish in the last year. Coach, I appreciate that. I'm I, listen. Everything you've said has encouraged me. I I I, I want to not only watch you all more closely this year. I'd, I'd I'd like to you know one of those coaches. What you're talking about and the commitment for this team, uh, it's just fantastic. I want to be a part of it. Uh, special teams. Uh, you mentioned Gainer coming back and and that they're going to be different options uh, from the kicking game as well. And I realize and and Roush was an All American in more than one area too. I mean, it's just uh, amazing what what he did just, and accomplished for not only defense All American punter. All American punter is a sophomore. Academic All American as a junior. All American linebacker as a senior. I didn't even say that to you. When yeah, I was rattling. That and graduated well, three and a half years with a nursing degree, like just a special, special young man. That that's fantastic. Well, I listen. We're I'm going to keep up with him at Pitt State then too. But uh, special teams, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we have uh, DJ Robinson. Uh, he's coming back as well as Caden Thomas. Both those guys had opportunities to kick for us last year. Uh, excited about some guys we have coming in to punt for us as well. Uh, you know, I think we have another lefty and a righty that can really punt and uh, boom the ball. And so long snapper was Bailey Brooks and Jace Neely last year. So those guys are back as well. So really got big shoes to fill with Casey Roush being gone. But, uh, you know, definitely have a lot of guys that have been have experience protecting on punt, running down on kickoff. But having the, the sophomore kickers back, uh, definitely exciting uh, for those guys. Season gets underway. It's not too long from now, just a couple of months. Realistically, August 31st, and that is a Saturday. You get your first couple of games at home, an 11-game slate this season. And you start off with Olivet Nazarene coming to town the next weekend, Saturday, September 7th. Defiance College coming to town, new new member of the conference and, and 
back in the NAIA as well. And then uh, first trip on the road at Marion on September 14th. Tell us a little bit about your season. Yeah, we haven't had 11 games while I've been head coach during the regular season. We, last time we had it was 2016. Uh, Lonnie Priest, our AD, his last year as head coach. And so, you know, they asked me with the fine join in the league and trying to fill out that schedule if we'd be open for it. And the way the academic calendar turned out uh, with the way the week zero is, we were able to still get a buy in there. And uh, why not get to play more football for these guys? They train all year round for it. So uh, that basically that's kind of why we set up for 11. Uh, in terms of starting with Olivet, right, uh, you know, I know Coach Mitchell pretty uh, really well. We just talked at the camp uh, not too long ago and uh, really respect uh, who he is, how he coaches, uh, going about his business. One of our alumni coaches uh, their special teams in DBs, Prince. And so, you know, definitely familiar with him. We've had a lot of battles. You know, I referenced the Lawrence Tech game a couple of mm-hmm. times in this video already. And, uh, you know, those, that's where those guys were last year. So, yeah, having them at home, I think it's going to be an exciting atmosphere. Uh, I definitely think a lot of people are going to come out to uh, see the Concordia games this fall. And so, yeah, we got the six home games. Uh, we have three night games um, uh, against Marion, Judson, St. X. And then we have our two conference games on the road uh, at the end of the year, uh, Taylor and Indiana Wesleyan. So those are normal kickoff times. But, uh, yeah. What, it's kind of a wild season, you know. You get three. You don't normally get three night games in the NAI. Plus, we have the eleven. You know, there's a lot. You know, a lot of excitement. You know, take a couple of these things. I would have been jacked about them in previous years. And then you put this all together. Um, you know, I, I'm we're praying that our guys can just uh, live out this together, continue to grow in mind, body, and spirit. And uh, you know, we're going to continue to uh, be who we are, what we're about as coaches, as men, and as Christians, and really uh, pour into these guys to the best of our ability. Coach, it has been encouraging to me. I appreciate the time that you have given to us today on Midwest Sportsnet, and I hope that uh, it's encouraging to everyone else. Uh, the makings of what could be a very special season, and I believe will be a special season, uh, win, lose, or whatever, for for you, your team, these young men, and that it's going to be a time to remember. Coach Joshua Schumacher, the Concordia Cardinals, heading into the 2024 season. Success to you all this year, and thank you again for taking time with us. Thank you very much, Joey. 